Hello and welcome back to coverage of the 2023 Skelleftia Open, the fifth stop of the PDGA Euro Tour. We are excited to be bringing you Round 3 Front 9 FPO Elite Card coverage, brought to you by MDG Media. With only 18 holes remaining, we will soon be crowning your next PDGA Euro Tour champion, likely one of these ladies on our lead card. To get us started, Silva Sarinen, your leader from both rounds one and two. She's looking really well composed and playing a great game, not just this weekend, but already coming off a win at the Crocall Open. She is super hot right now. Her game is looking really clean. Yanni Karpinen joining us here. She had an amazing performance in round two to make her way to that solo second position. Showed brief flashes of greatness stringing together two to four birdies in a row at times. It was really impressive. Definitely earned her spot here. Joining them, Ella Hansen, competitor from the United States, has come over for a brief stretch in Europe, known for her big power, well-rounded game, definitely a force to contend with as she battles for these podium positions. And rounding out our lead card here, Rachel Turton, also a previous champion already this season at the Konopiste Open. She has a really good forehand, which you see right there, which she really leans on on this course and to a great result. Happy to have Rachel joining us and rounding out our lead card. We start here on hole one, a 219 meter par five with OB lining the left side the entire way beyond all of those trees. The fairway ever so softly bends right to left as it then snakes through this final tunnel. It then has a final turn back to the right you can see, although it's only 219 meters, it requires some very good precision and a good risk reward management, as you don't need too much distance, but you do need to stay in the fairway to avoid finding too much trouble on the right or the left. You see this well-guarded basket tucked away at the left. The road on the right is safe, but the right well, side of Finland the road, and far sponsored side, by Excelist Silva Sarinen. Silva's coming into this final round with a two-stroke lead over Yeni to get us started here. Not turned over quite as much as she needs, but still enough distance to, I think, be just Up fine. Next from Finland and sponsored by Prodigy, Jenny Karpinen. Importantly, Silva's shot fell straight down into the fairway. We will see Yeni now look to put a little bit more turn on that shot and complete the full flight. Up next from the United States, sponsored by Discmania, Ella Hansen. Ella here, known for her great power off the tee. Definitely a determining factor for her. She opts for the power hyzer, looking to hit this gap on one angle and she just barely scrapes by the left side, settles way up there. That's a nice spot to be if you can afford to throw that shot. Although she could have Put it Up a little bit more to the right. From she really the used United the Kingdom, sponsored by Prodigy, Rachel Turtle. Another Prodigy sponsored player here. Rachel really relying on her D1s. She likes to cycle their stabilities and carries quite a few as you see her get that full flex out there. An amazing drive really pushing the distance of that back tree line and keeping it in the middle, that is ideal. You see Yeni up first, playing the hyzer. She beats the corner and gets some solid ground play. I think that is absolutely fine from where she was. 
She'll be happy with that. Silver just a little bit further up now. We'll see how aggressive she chooses to get. She could go on the inside gap with a turnover or the outside gap on a soft hyzer. She actually has another slightly early release playing to those left side trees. You saw her fortunate to break through the gap, but really testing the left side rough here. Ella to break out of the tree line. A long pushing flight. She is right up there, putting for Eagle. Really nice control of the speed on that shot, pushing the road long. Rachel on her second, opting for more of a placement shot, playing the hyzer skip. I like keeping it low between these trees. It can mitigate some of the risk of kicking off something. It will have less room to fly away if it's low to the ground. Yeni here trying to attack the green with a big bomb coming up just a bit shy on the left side although I think putting likely with some obstacles in her way around that last corner. Silva with a great power and control from the standstill. Oh she was just pushing the entrance to the green but catching the small sapling on the right she is still quite a long ways out. And will likely be putting, although I'm not sure an easy one. You see what Rachel's left with there, having to skip one around and done very nicely. Leaving her with that short putt. Smooth control of the overstability. It can be very easy to hit the ground a bit early or late on those close skip shots. Silva with some nice touch as well. So again, he did have an open look with that deep straddle putt just a little bit early to the left and you see some frustration from her. I think that was one that she wanted to make, although definitely suggests some high standards. This is Ella here looking to catch the eagle, but we'll have to settle for birdie there just off the right side. Amazing throwing to give herself such a close chance and Rachel securing the birdie there. Nicely done. Good placement in the fairway the whole way up there. A well executed game plan for Rachel. Ella coming back now for her birdie. Yeti securing the par. She grounded her first shot a little bit low resulting in less distance off the tee as she works her way to the green was left with a slightly longer putt than Silva as well, catching the early left side trees. We walk away with two birdies and two pars. We move on to hole two, a 94 meter par three with this early double mando and a tight gap directly off the tee. You want something to punch through this gap on a hyzer angle that pushes forwards and then begins to fade left towards this mulch hill Anything that goes over the road will be counted as OB, although that friendly backstop really does catch a lot of the discs that go too far left or too long. This is an attackable one, you just want to hit the gap and let your disc do the work to the left. We have Ella up first now. A really smooth shot, you saw her land early on the hyzer angle, get the skip. She is pretty much parked. A great shot by Ella to get us started. Rachel flips this one up to flat, not quite maintaining the hyzer fade that I'm sure she was looking for, and as a result will be left just outside circle two. Still moving towards the basket. We see our leader, Silva, here. Getting it nose up, which I like, it will ensure that it does fade out and not overturn. And even giving it a soft run at the ace, she fires past the basket. Really smooth control there. And a ton of power with a very clean form. We have Yeni now.
Make sure to support the Patreon to support European disc golf coverage and get exclusive content. We see Yenny push that long tree line a little bit, but Faye just in time skimming the trees. She is also right up there in the circle. Rachel with an awkward forehand approach, but does what needs to be done. Kenny from the knee caches the birdie really smooth. You see just how punishing it is if you're around those trees early on. It's not very far from the basket. We see Silva coming back here, lower left side, catches that one as well. Rare to see Silva with a timid looking putt, although she gives it enough to find the chains and secure her first birdie of this final round here. Rachel for par, and she makes sure to put that one in. Hole two playing is one of the easier holes, actually average 2.88, more birdies than bogeys, despite the very tight gap and the double mando drop zone being very difficult still. We see Ella there with the short tap in to go two for two. Move on to hole three, a 231 meter par five, a very demanding shot. You have OB lining the left side the entire way. As you move up about two thirds of the way through the fairway, you see it narrow where OB comes in on all sides and you reach this small bridge. A really good tee shot will allow the player to throw over on the second shot. Otherwise your second will need to pitch up before as you then break out over the narrowing into this open field, you want to beat those early guardians, hit this late tunnel, and slide your way up to the basket. This is a slightly new position from last year. They slid the basket back, making it considerably harder to access the green. Ella playing the wide power forehand getting caught up in one of those late trees. She still has enough distance, I think, to consider crossing, but it will be very difficult. Although with her power, I think she will really try to make sure to put herself in position to still attack for birdie. We see Silva now with a very similar line to the one she hit in round two. Really nice soft flex through the fairway, very clean the whole way. Yeni playing with a lot of height and Enheiser catches the middle guardian trees, the ones with that island in the middle. You really have to pick a side left or right. And Rachel here also opting for the backhand, not enticed by the forehand line, which we saw Ella throw, but she does go to the left. And if this does not turn, she will be contending with OB and that fades very early. I think she, Likely they wanted that to turn more. Yeah, I'm confused not getting any headwind. Yeni simply pitching up. Didn't get enough distance to feel comfortable trying to cross from the compromised position. We'll hopefully get her third over the narrowing into the second leg of the fairway. Ella here, I think also just pitching up. You saw the awkward stance that she's left with. And she actually underturns it there and just catching the edge of that hill will find herself OB. Rachel throwing her second shot but third stroke putting herself in position. Silva in an ideal spot able to cross here on her second shot get to the mouth of that tunnel and she pierces through the two trees. Someone tell her that's not a double mando because that's uh, a <laughs> Uh, cool line that she took. Unnecessary, but very cool. We see Yeni here. Fire her hyzer up there.
Rachel from a very inside position sends the Heiser out and does not flip it over. A similar mistake to the first throw off the tee of hole three here. Releasing on Heiser and not quite turning it over, whether it's a misrelease or maybe a disc choice situation. She tends to be playing to the left side. We see Ella there battling towards the mouth. She'll be left with a long putt towards the basket. Silva, this is her third shot here. Fires it left, a slight early release. And we'll see how much she's left with. This is Yeni trying to get as close as possible here. She's then putting for par from that lie, I believe. I like this option to get through this late tunnel. I find with the forehand you can look right at it. And you see Rachel punch through just like that, park it underneath the pin. Very nice. This is a really tough spot. Ella there pushing into that left side. Managing to get the disc out, although in a very difficult way. We see the first putt come in on three, silver for par. Rachel taking the double there, contended with OB and had a few errant shots on the way. On this tricky par 5, it can be enough to do some damage. Ella, also with an OB stroke, although on her second throw, finds the single bogey. And Yeni the par. Hole 3 actually averaged 6.06, .06, more than a full stroke over par. So, speaks to its difficulty. Here you see hole four, another par five, although this one 225 meters. You have this slightly elevated tee position going into this fairway that goes downhill as well as bending softly to the right. You have two OB water features, the pond to the left and the river to the right, as you want to cross over them on your second shot, pushing as far up to the front as you can on the first. You then have to choose which gap you want to take between this divided fairway and then try to access this well-guarded green behind these last and final trees. This hole really allows you to play to either side, left or right, and other than the tee shot that pushes you down the center fairway, it really gives you some choices of what shot and shape you choose to throw. I think some thoughtful course design. Yeni there, not quite getting as much turn as she needed to position herself ideally, pushing it a little bit straight. We'll see if Ella can make the correction. And I think with her power, she doesn't need, feel the need to get so close to the water. I think she's confident bombing it over even from there without any rightwards movement, just laying up to have an open straight look. And Rachel as well, just pushing a sort of straight flying shot. We'll have Yeni up first now. And a smooth shot, although she'll leave these trees in her way, likely having to pick an uncomfortable gap. Ella, you can see here, has not yet gone down the slope, simply positioning herself on the flat, allowing her a cross the valley shot, really removing the altitude from play, and she sneaks through. Spinning up right to the catch cam. Two very solid shots. Exactly where you want to be. Looking like James Proctor on the bag for Ella. He's had a great season so far. We see Rachel here from a patent pending backhand position. 
give a nice soft hyzer, good distance up there and keeping it in the fairway didn't bite off too much or try to create any unnecessary shapes, just making her way up the fairway safely. Silva here from the inside line, turning one over and beating these last few trees. That'll also be quite a nice spot for her. Rachel trying to break through these late trees towards the green and she skips onto the island. Really solid. She will be giving herself a birdie putt from what was a tough position. That was a great shot from Rachel. May have looked simple on the camera, but she had a lot of late gaps to hit. Yeni flexing the power forehand, coming up just a little bit short, but getting a really nice full shape on that. As we see, I believe Silva approaching to the basket, most likely a very smooth shot landing right in the bullseye. We'll have Yeni putting up first. And she secures it from outside the island, managing that one really nice. You see Ella has made her way up to the green and a dead center putt, but very high in the chains and it comes back out towards her. You could see she just assumed it was in, bent over to pick up the mini and we've all felt that feeling as you look up, it's on the floor and you didn't quite see how. Rachel there securing the birdie as well, and Silva, hole four, looking like easy work for our feature card, lead card rather, here in hole three, featuring some of the best players in the world and in Europe battling it out. Good to see a smile on Ella's face. Hole five, a 104 meter par three. As you push your shot straight between these trees and out this gap, this hole really encourages a soft flex shot. You can also try the hyzer flip, although at 105 meters requires a ton of power to hold that sort of one angle shot. The soft flex will get through the tree line and then fade hard to the left. I think due to that finish left, it also encourages quite an overstable disc, although the danger is right behind the basket and left of it early, an OB line. So anything that fades left too early or too dramatically, we'll find an OB. Silva off the tee. And that's a great example. She's about, I think, one meter out of bounds there, fading out just a touch early. It, it widens as you get pin high up to the basket, but that shot from her looked to be about 90, and until about 95 or 100 meters, it's very tight. And we see a much more straight flying shot from Yeni there, really smooth. But she'll have a scary putt towards OB from quite a distance, look to be about 12 meters. Rachel there getting softly overturned. As I mentioned that overstability earlier, this hole really encourages the Anheuser release with an overstable disc. You see Ella just pumping out the power hyzer though that I mentioned early on, coming out just a little bit early and quite low to the ground that doesn't have the final finish forwards and left that I think she would have liked. See Rachel approaching up first. She's likely going to keep this just a bit short as anything long is danger. Although that's still a tester. Simple stepper for Ella. Oh, Silva just off the band. A confident putt to save her par, not quite connecting. This is Yeni coming back from a tee shot going just long. And you see it come up just a little bit short. It's tough to give that full confidence knowing the OB is directly behind. A similar situation now for Rachel. Pachi caches it. That's actually a, a great putt. You saw it snuck over the cage into the heart of the chains. 
That's a huge move. That's the difference between a three and possibly a five right there, making that putt. And Yenny coming back for the same result. We're looking at a bogey for Silva and a par for Ella, meaning that all three players get a stroke on the leader here on hole five. Hole six, an 85 meter par three. You have this early high floor, as well as a slightly low ceiling in that tree right in the way. This hole sort of requires a nose up throw, so a good angle control is necessary here to beat the high floor and ensure that you push forwards. After flying forwards, you see the basket tucked just inside the tree line. You can get some leftwards fade if you'd like it, although it's not necessary. I think just a straight shot ending by the pin is all you need. This is about distance control and angle control here. You need to ensure despite throwing slightly nose up, you can get it straight and not go any further than 85. Yeni getting it really high and left, an extremely early release and she falls down there. There is not really any OB to speak of other than way to the right side, so likely not coming into play for these backhand throwers. Rachel disking up to the fairway. You see her slide just past, and that's a great spot. She's about eight, nine meters out in the circle, putting for birdie. Nice example of that straight flying shot the whole way. Ella punching through with a ton of speed, and this is firing long of the basket. She will be left with a few trees in her way from circle two. Really hit the gap nicely, but just too much speed. One of the two requirements I mentioned earlier on to really nail this hole. Oh, and Silva Sarinen hitting the cage. I wonder if she knows. A really incredible shot there. Almost catching the ace. She is your leader currently. What a statement that would be as she's left with a short birdie putt. Yeni there, unable to close all the distance remaining to the pin. We'll still be left with a tester. This is Ella from circle two. Here's Rachel from just inside the circle, about nine. And she finds it really nice birdie. That's a nice angle there to show just what she was working with. Quite far out, slight tree in the way. Gets the straddle in. Ella, the tester for the par save. Very nice. And Yeni will be left with a similar test now. That was for her par. She will be carding a bogey here on hole six. So you see Silva for her two. Incredible, almost getting the one, taking the easy birdie as well. Often the ace run is not a short birdie putt, but she caught metal from the tee. Very smooth. Hole seven, a 159 meter par four. You have this initial tunnel to contend with. You wanna throw something that pushes all the way and positions yourself here to enter this mouth as the fairway, fairway bends 90 degrees to the right side, almost folding back in on itself. There is a mando tree on the right side playing to the left, not allowing any shortcuts through the trees. You have to place yourself at the mouth of the tunnel and then try to break through into the screen with hazard water directly behind.
Rachel getting us started with the power hyzer. She's come up just a little bit short of the ideal position to throw a straight shot. She'll be left, I think, with another forehand for her, most likely. There is OB to the left side, which, yeah, Silva has found. Unfortunately, she will have a decent angle to enter the green. You want to push that OB on the left as close as you can without going in there because it really opens up the angle of the second shot if you can play to the left side fairway. But of course, it comes with its dangers. We saw Ella with a early release to the left and Yeni here firing the straight shot, although also a little bit low, very similar to Rachel's line. And gets a interesting skip there. She'll be slightly pinched now from the gap. Ella throws that forehand, we hear her caddy immediately from the hand say, that is so good. Loving that line. Very tight and precise. Silva, they're not able to pierce through. We see Rachel here, likely playing the forehand skip. Yep, yeah, just to get her way around the corner and as much distance rightwards as she can from an unideal position, although keeping it safe. We see Yeni here. Just pitching out into the middle of the second leg of the fairway, caught a little bit of an inside gap, ensuring not to mess with the Mando at all. She now positions herself for this third shot. Oh, and that's Rachel's third as well as it bleeds long. You see that painted white line on the rocks actually playing as hazard. So Rachel will need to putt where it is back. So you see a nice approach there. And we get now to Ella's shot. This is her third. Just looking to putt this one up there. Nice and safe. Coming up a bit short to remove that OB potential from coming into play. But some short work remaining. If she can clean this up here. A good... Oh, but just a bit low from about five meters out. We'll see if Yeni here can make the correction a similar distance. And she catches high right side, putting it in quite central. Good save from Rachel. Unfortunate that the approach goes long, but making sure to bring it back nicely. Dang. Ella there did all of the hard work to get up there to save par after a tough tee shot, but unfortunately not coming through on the first putt. And Silva will tap in her bogey as well. Hole number eight. 190 meter par four. You have OB lining the left side for the first two thirds of the fairway. You wanna then hit the mouth of this late tunnel. And get as far up here as you can. The green is at a very awkward angle to approach, especially if you don't get big distance off the tee. A good tee shot really is a determining factor of whether or not you even have a chance to birdie here on hole eight. The fairway bends to the right and enters through this late gap to this nice mulch green. A very tough hole. To birdie, I think a lot of players will be absolutely fine with a four here on hole number eight. We have Yeni up first. Fading out to the left will open up her gap a little bit more, but she'll have some trees in her way that she needs to navigate between or around. Rachel with a really nicely shaped flight. You see that flipping up to flat and holding it the whole way. Just incredibly smooth. She hits the mouth of that second leg of the fairway. Really nicely done. Silva now. Also holding that forwards pushing flight. She comes up just shy of that tree. It may be in her throwing stroke. Might compromise the distance she can get on the second. 
mentioned it earlier, Ella known for her distance, but not so valuable, unfortunately, if you still hit obstacles along the way. As we see her find one of the early trees, battling through with the forehand flex. Really nice recovery. That's very well done job from a tough position. A lot of progress right up into the middle of the fairway. Silva there, battling the low ceiling. And Yeni simply opting to pitch up back into the fairway now. Rachel doesn't like it, but she hits the corner on heavy hyzer. Getting some flair and skip, she finds herself in the right side rough. That's an important throw for Yeni there, opting to pitch up. She gave herself that position and she did not make it all the way up to the green yet. We'll still have some distance to contend with. Selva with a nice upshot, gets her way very high and floaty into the green. Yeni playing the high Anheuser as well. Makes her way to the mulch, but still outside the circle will be left with a C2 tester. Although a very safe green to try and run your putts on. The fairway is really the tough part of hole 8. Rachel doing the same, as we'll see some long putts now. Yeni up first. Rachel giving it a bid as well from circle two. She was just outside about 12 meters and just shaking off the left side chains. Ella offering to tap out here, securing her par. As I mentioned, a very good score here on hole eight. This one averaging 5.25, quite shocking, but you see the difficulty here. Silva and Rachel securing their bogeys. Yeni with the double. Ella takes some strokes on this lead card with the par. Hole number nine, a 229 meter par four. You want to punch through this gap, avoiding any trouble to the left side as there is a late mando tree, forcing players to play to the right side. Once you get through here, you then suddenly have some OB along the right side fairway to contend with all along that tree line. The fairway bends to the left, leaving you a long look with another open fairway into late gap that you absolutely need to hit if you want any chance at the birdie. Another very difficult hole, averaging an entire stroke over par. This one requires two amazing shots to have a chance to birdie. Ella looking to turn one over through the gap. There's a little bit too much of a slow turning flight there and catches the left side trees. Rachel looking to make the correction does a similar thing and fortunate to fight through and push forwards though as she turned away well before it finished its flight. You can tell she was not happy with that one. Silva here has seen two shots go to the left side now. We'll see if that enters her mind at all. And she pures it right down the gap, fading out a little bit left, but I think that's still a nice position for her to try and battle around that corner on the next one. Yanni releasing on Heiser with something that she wants to flip. We see it try and fight its way out of that angle the whole way, long fighting Heiser but moving left the whole way, she doesn't quite flip it up to flat, although an absolutely fine shot for Yeni. We see Ella here playing the huge spike hyzer, dropping it down in the fairway. She's shown a good scramble game. Ella is uh, very resourceful from these difficult positions and always managing to make good progress up the fairway, despite some 
imperfect tee shots. She really makes any position work. And Rachel there throwing the power hyzer around the corner. Nice long finish to that shot. Yenny with some tight gaps to try and hit. You see the Mando one on the left of your screen there. So she pretty much was forced to go within that inside gap or fully around it and sacrifice distance. She takes the risk. And this now her third throw. Really nice. I mean, she loses a bit of speed on the branches, but the line was pure. Bring her just shy of where she wants to be. We'll be left with a circle to putt to try and save par. This is also Ella's third shot now. And she manages to squeak through the right side rough and into the circle, just about five or six meters out. That is a great result. Silva with a hard thud, trying to get that Anheuser, digs it into the ground and finds some stone. Or did she hit the bridge? I believe Silva may have even hit that small bridge there. Or t pad rather. We see Yeni here putting from it now. Oh, and a healthy shot just a little bit to the right side, but also a good control of the pace. We've seen Yeni have some really nice circle to bids, always keeping it close while giving it a run. Another good run from way downtown there. We'll see if Rachel can manage to find this one. And she does with the stepper, securing par, hole nine, averaging a flat five, four playing as a birdie for all purposes. And Ella really getting herself up there, continuing to have some struggles on the green. She brings it back for her bogey there. Got Silva and Yeni as well. Another example where Parr is taking strokes on this lead card. As we see some struggles here in round three, a very exciting and close battle between our FPO competitors. As we take a look at the top 10 standings, Silva Sarinen, you saw a tough ending on hole seven, eight and nine for her, but still retaining the solo lead position at one over. Yeni in second, four over, tied in third, both Ella and Rachel battling for that podium position. And just behind them, Hanna Lemette at seven over. Nikola Moravsova, who we saw in round two coverage. It is still a very tight race with only nine holes left to go. Make sure to join us on the back nine, and we'll see you there. Thanks for watching.